Hello everybody, my name is Tavin Boynton. I am Director of Web Strategy over here at Zidana Consulting. And today I'm gonna to be going over how to integrate Zoho PageSense onto WordPress. All right, so to get started, I have two tabs open. The first is the backend of my WordPress account where I'll be integrating the PageSense header tracking code. And the second is Zoho PageSense. And you can get to it through your CRM or you can get to it by clicking on pagesense.zoho.com. Now, before I get into it, I wanted to explain what is PageSense. So Zoho PageSense is a lot like Google Analytics where it provides user data about user activity on your website. And the main benefit is Instead of making design decisions just because you feel like it or you think something looks cool or looks trendy, now you can make design decisions based on user data. And the, the goal is that it'll help you generate more business, generate more revenue, and bring in more leads. So PageSense allows you to visualize this user data using heat maps, which Google Analytics does not provide. So um, these are some reasons why we like using it at Sonata. All right, so to get into it, this is our staging WordPress account. I'm going to go here to the dashboard. Now, how do you install PageSense? So we're talking today about WordPress, but if you don't have WordPress and you're using another website builder, or perhaps you have a custom built website, what you need to do is install um, the code snippet on the head section, the head tag of your HTML website. So HTML is laid out um, with head tags where you can add your integrations and your scripts. A lot of JavaScript usually goes there. And then you have your body tag, which contains all the content on your website. So if you're using um, a custom built site, just make sure to put it in the custom code section of that site. But on WordPress, we are using a plugin. Uh, we found this is just the best and the easiest and that way our clients, if they go to their website and they want to quickly figure out where their code snippets are, we have uh, um, added this plugin for, for your use. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to plugins. We're going to go to add new at the top. And here on the right, we're going to search. We're going to search for custom CSS and JS. Here we go. So this is the first plugin that you'll find. It's a way to simply inject um, new code onto your website. And as you can see, it has over 400,000 active installs, so you can trust it. Um, I know that it's, um, it's good. It's not going to um, do anything funky to your site. Uh, so what you'll do now is you'll um, install it. And then after that, it, you'll see a button to say activate. Now we've already activated it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here to the left sidebar and click custom CSS and JS. And at the top, I'm going to click add HTML code. All right, we're going to call this Zoho page sets. And you can keep all of this code. It's pretty much just um, help code. And then at the end of it is where we'll inject our, or embed, whatever word you want to use, we'll embed our code from PageSense. Now let's go over to PageSense. So again, I go to pagesense.zoho.com and it takes me here. Welcome to Zoho PageSense. All right, so here we'll add our name. We'll say Zenato test. We don't need a pay, uh, phone number. I'm kind of going to show you uh, the bare minimum info you need to put on here because there's a lot of screens requesting a lot of information and not all of it is required. So um, we're gonna go to my URL here so we can copy this. And we're gonna organization name, that's fine. We're gonna optimize this one. And you see it gave me this error, please provide a valid domain. Sometimes you need to take away slashes until it works. What is your average monthly visitor traffic? Honestly, we, we've never been able to figure out um, how, how this really affects the functions of the platform. We think maybe they, Zoho uses this um, to know more about the customers. And we're going to say we are an agency. Okay, 
add next. This is where we'll embed our code. So we will copy, we'll go back to our HTML window here and we'll paste it there. And then we'll click here, publish. Excellent. So now if you were to go into the left sidebar again and click it, you'll see we have our page sense code here. All right, now we'll click next on page sense. Here is where it displays a privacy um, pop-up for your users. And I know if you're in Europe, um, this is definitely a requirement. In the US, things aren't required as of now, but we still think it's the best practice to notify your visitors that they're being tracked and allow them to opt out. So uh, we always select this. And it, as you can see, we'll display this message. Uh, looks like you can customize um, the look and feel of this right here. All right, next, uh, we've done some extensive research on the functionality of these functions. And let's, let's go into it. So element clicks, we find benefits for pretty much. You can take the ID tag of um, certain elements on your page and then track conversions on those elements. Link clicks is very similar. Um, instead of needing the ID, you can just um, select which link um, you're tracking. Time spent on page, we have felt internally that it's not quite as um, substantial because you're kind of using an arbitrary metric to track what a conversion is. So um, one thing that they suggest for this is count 20 seconds on a page as a conversion event. But you really don't know um, if it's a conversion event based on time on page. And then custom event would be if there's something specific to your business. But usually element clicks or link clicks can handle um, anything that you would need. I'm gonna click next, however, to show you that these are not required to set up to get to the meat and potatoes of what Zoho Page Sense can offer. All right. First, we're gonna enable heat map for all pages. And then session recording is kind of up to you in terms of your business. We've worked with clients that have a specific person on their team whose role is to manage their website analytics. And if this is um, your type of company, then by all means, enable session recording. But for a company like ours, where we're lean and mean, we, um, we don't have time to go over all the um, sessions of our users. So pretty much what this will do is it will record every single session that your users are on your website for, and you'll be able to see exactly the order of clicks that they um, made on your website. Um, but we find a lot of value in the heat map data. So that's what I'm going to go into today. All right, now we'll press start. All right, here you have a little tour and you can flip through it to see the different functions of Zoho PageSense. But because you can see that here, I'm gonna skip ahead and go into the bulk of what I wanted to talk about today. So as you can see up top, you'll be able to see your acquisition behavior of your users over time. You'll be able to see which sources they come from, whether it's direct from a search engine or someone searching for your website directly be able to see um, which areas of the world your users are coming from. On behavior, it's sort of the same, but one cool feature that we enjoy is the exit pages. You'll be able to see the flow that your users take from the home page to maybe your services page, and you'll be able to see which page are your users dropping off at. And these could be the pages that you probably need to focus on in your optimization efforts. Um, goals will be the goals we talked about. And then a lot of the other tools um, are um, great and um, you should explore as well. Um, some of the tools we haven't used as much as Zenata are the pop-ups, push notifications, and polls. Pretty much you can create pop-ups and push notifications a lot like major websites. Maybe you're on Macy's and it says, hey, do you want to subscribe to Macy's? Uh, push notifications and receive alerts. This is something you can do within PageSense. So on top of the analytics end, it also has some of these advanced marketing tools, which is pretty interesting. 
Now, what we love most about PageSense is the heat map tool. So I'm going to click new heat map and I'm going to call it um, home page test heat map. And what you can do is you can create heat maps for each of your pages. Um, and I'll show you here the benefit of that. Again, I'm going to copy my URL and I'm going to say track all visitors. Now, why would you ever want to track, let's say only 2000? We have found that perhaps if you want to do um, very set tests and have um, a test of 2000 and then another test of 2000 and then compare the data, that's why you might want to do it so that it almost is like a limit order in the stock market where it stops once it's hit a certain threshold. Whereas um, for our purposes, we want to see aggregate, um, what are, what's all the history? Um, what is all of our user data showing? So we usually do all visitors. Excellent. So here you'll see it pulls in a, a, a view of our web page, which is great. Now, if it didn't, you may need to check the code snippet again. And to check that, you go up here to configuration. And here at the top, you'll see um, it says verify. And we'll say, yep, yeah, that's the right URL. And here you see it's created a pop-up within the window and it says, perfect, our code is successfully installed. So that's everything you need to know to install PageSense on the site. Let's go back here um, to show you some of the uh, features available here. You'll be able to see a heat map as it collects data over time. And I'll show you that in a second um, with some live data. At the top, you can see different heat maps for desktop, tablet, and mobile. And this will provide valuable insights to you as a business owner to know if your users are using mostly desktop or mostly mobile. We had a client, interestingly enough, recently who had 80% um, of their user traffic was on mobile, yet their website was not mobile friendly. So they hired us to redo their website um, with mobile in mind. So over time, you'll be able to see these sort of insights on your website. All right, now I'm going to go in to a live example for Zenata.com and our use of Zoho PageSense. All right, so here we go. I am using Figma. It's a design tool that we use a lot at Sonata. And I'm going to be showing you how we use Zoho PageSense to leverage um, business decisions that helped us get more leads in our pipeline. All right. So back in November of 2020, we were looking to redesign our website. And as with every website project, we wanted to start first with the structure and we wanted to start first with our navigation. Now, the main goal of our website is to drive leads and to drive new business. And that's probably um, very similar to your goals at your company as well. Now, what we were interested to learn is that although we wanted the number one goal of our site to be contact us, looking at all the navbar items, contact us was actually the least clicked on of everything. So that was valuable information um, from a business standpoint to know something needs to change and the way that things currently are uh, is not working. So after doing some redesigning, we decided to redesign our layout of our navigation and change the contact to be a button and call it book a meeting instead of contact, which we felt was more action oriented. So when you're looking at call to action buttons, we're always trying to look, how do we encourage action and how do we make it very clear that that's the action we want our users to take? Um, there's this book I read in design school and it talks about how you have to spoon feed your users and how um, users don't like reading. And I think all of us know our attention spans aren't very long these days. So it's really less is more when it comes to web design. And that's what um, this user experience thinking is for this new nav bar is let's make it a button and let's make it very clear that that's what we want them to do. 
And now after the redesign, we compared our Zoho page stands results and we found that overwhelmingly book and meeting was one of the top clicked items on the nav bar. So that was a big success. Okay. Now I wanted to show you another example of how we use the Zoho page sense heat map to inform design decisions on the whole homepage, not just the nav bar. So as you can see at the top, it's the same as before. We were lucky to see that or happy to see that um, the book and meet me and services buttons were clicked um, a lot um, on the hero section. And then going down here, we noticed something interesting. We had decided to design these three tiles to inform our users about the services that we offer. Yet we didn't intend for them to be buttons. We intended them just to be informational. But it was really interesting to see that tons of people were clicking on these tiles. So um, this was very helpful for us to learn. We need to make these buttons. So we went ahead and right after this, we created sub pages for each of these and made them into buttons. And that has helped increase our lead conversion even more. Um, since we made those changes. All right, and that completes our tutorial today of how to integrate Zoho PageSense on your WordPress website. Again, my name is Tavin Boynton. I'm the Director of Web Strategy over here at Zenata Consulting. And if you like what you saw, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more awesome content. All right, have a great day.